Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast with Bryce Johnson. It's a show that unpacks sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Enjoy inspiring conversations and thought-provoking interviews. You'll hear stories from people that will inspire, challenge, and encourage you. Now, from the Unpacking It studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, uniting sports fans everywhere, here is Bryce Johnson. And joining us now is former NFL safety Leonard Wheeler. He was selected in the third round of the 1992 NFL Draft and spent eight years in the NFL with the Cincinnati Bengals, Minnesota Vikings, and the Carolina Panthers. He is now an accomplished speaker, author, performance coach, and executive advisor. Plus, he's an NFL executive director and an NFL transitions coach. Leonard attended Troy University. He has a degree in business and psychology and another one in communication. He starred in the movie Radio, the TV show One Tree Hill, and has been featured on BET. He wrote a book called Beyond the Locker Room, Developing Your Game Plan for Life's Transitions. Leonard joins us today on Unpacking It to talk faith, life, and football. Leonard, thanks so much for joining us. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much, Bryce, for having me, man. I'm excited. Oh, man. Well, we're, we're fired up to, to have you and, and great to, to finally get you on the show. And, and you've got a great story to share. And, and so we're going to uh, jump into your, your faith journey in, in just a little bit. But I want to start uh, with what you did uh, kind of the previous week is you were at the NFL Combine. And, and so how was it? And, and what exactly was your role while you were there? So first of all, when we go to the Combine, it is through the NFL Legends community, and we are basically there, Bryce, to help these guys and assist them along this journey. One, we've been there. Two, we understand that how important mentorship is. And three, it's about connecting brotherhood to brotherhood. It's about that peer-to-peer model of mentoring to where we are there to just continue to help mold them create a safe haven situation to where if they have any questions, right, they, we make ourselves available to answer those questions for them. Sometimes awesome. those questions can be around, hey, uh, I need to remove some distractions or whatever it may be. We make ourselves available so that they can ask us those questions. Wow. And so what are some of those, those questions like that, that, that really jump out to you? Sometimes it's as simple as, hey, man, I have this interview. What are some of the things I should focus on? Okay. Or sometimes it might be, hey, look, I'm a little, um, you know, I have a little bit of anxiety going into this situation with the drills. What do I need my mind to be set on? Right. And then sometimes when they're even coming off of the drill itself, they'll come to me and go, hey, how did I look? Mm. Right. And so it's really about keeping their minds focus on the task at hand. It's so important to make sure that they don't create those internal uh, distractions of self-talk that can sometimes easily plague us in those times to, to perform at a peak performance level. Man, no, that, I mean, that's so valuable to, to have you guys there. And, and you mentioned that word mentorship. How important is that to you and, and just the understanding that, that you are a, a mentor to these guys and, and even thinking back to when you were coming into the league, knowing how valuable it was to have mentors in your life? You know, that's a great question because I have a daughter that age and my daughter, she runs track at Georgia Tech. She's 21 years old. So yeah. when I look at these guys, I think about my own daughter who is a college athlete and, and I say, gosh, you know, when I was 21 years old, I wish the NFL had this program for me mm. because what it does, man, it allows you to kind of drop your guard because you have guys that are coming in and you know that they are for you, that they want to play in your huddle and help you win. And so when you have that situation, right, it becomes a perfect opportunity for you to allow people to pour into your life. Ah, that's awesome. Good stuff. He's Leonard Wheeler. Uh, joining us here on Unpacking It was at the NFL Combine. And, and were there maybe a couple players that, that really stood out to you? Maybe just their performance, but also the, the interaction that you had with them? 
Man, I can just tell you, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It was, you know, Blaze, uh, Blaze Brown was a great, I mean, his, the character of this young man was amazing. I mean, these kids, I cannot name one defensive back that did not impress me. Mm, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm really not exaggerating. These guys, this might have been the best defensive back class. Uh, that I've been a part of over the past three years. Just the character, the respect, um, just the the hunger, right? I mean, even when you look at the guy, uh, Zedrick Woods uh, from the University of Mississippi, I mean, he ran a 4-2-9. I Whoa. mean, you know, you look, at some of, you look at some of these performances, and then Jamel Dean up from Auburn ran a 4-3-0. Mm. So you look at defensive linemen that from the, the uh, defensive tackle from Alabama, he ran a four eight, three hundred plus pounds. <laughs> so you look at these performances, you're going, what what's happening right now? You Gosh. know, so it's pretty pretty amazing, man. No, it, it, it's impressive, and and these guys are able to, you know, showcase their their skills to to all these scouts and and NFL personnel, and so it's a big deal for sure. And so it's cool that you're there and you're a part of things, and you're able to uh, to meet these young guys and and help them uh, transition into the NFL and and that word transition is really a, a big part of of your life and and what you do at this this stage of your life and your career and and on your website leonardwheeler.com uh, it says that your mission is to help individuals teams and organizations to go beyond coping with life's transitions to ultimately achieve their highest performance levels and reach their full potential and so why is that your your mission and passion in life because I believe at the end of the day, you know, God's purpose for us is to live a life on purpose. But it's not just to live it on purpose, it's to live it with passion, right? And oh, yeah. I believe that the foundation of living life on purpose and living it with passion is understanding how to serve people. Mm. Because he did it better than anyone else. And I believe this, that if we have a heart of service, it creates our vision. It creates our mission. It creates more provision as God provides for us and allows us to pour into other people because we learn how to die to ourselves, mm. right? And we learn how to exalt the Father who's in us, and that Holy Spirit then ignites us to want to be a light to everybody that we touch, Bryce. Mm. We become that lighthouse to speak into the lives of people that we are in front of. Amen. Man, no, it's so strong from Leonard Wheeler, and and so with that, you you've really focused in on on you know helping people in life's transitions, and and we all deal with it, uh, you know, multiple times. Sometimes those transitions are you know positive. Sometimes they're they're difficult situations, and we're forced to to transition when we don't really want to. And and so, what are some of those those key principles that that you walk alongside? of people and, and, and point them toward, you know, the things that you've learned and the things that they can implement to be able to transition well? One is understanding self-actualization, understanding self-awareness, mm. right? And so understanding self-awareness, which means this, where am I right now? Like, where am I? Not just, and it's not rhetorical, really. It's asking a question, where am I? Number two is understanding how to ignite the passion in us, mm. right? So how do you even unveil the passion for you to be that leader, right? And then understanding what type of leader am I? Everybody's not built the same. Everybody, they don't think the same. So understanding that, you know what? I might not think like you, but man, what's so amazing is that if we come together and understand that our unity and understanding how to create one, to serve one another for a bigger cause, we continue to win. Mm. Like we continue to win. So it's identifying so many different levels, Bryce, man. That's what makes me excited about doing what I do because I love going into companies and teaching them how to not be over emotional when it comes to making a decision. Mm. But understanding that you have intellect, but you also need your emotional quotient so that you can make practical, realistic time Found decision. No, that's so good. And so with, with that, because I, I was going to ask you about this, because I think that that term is such a, a unique and important term 
uh, emotional intelligence, and and I think you just used uh, the emo- your emotional quotient. So so let's go a little bit further into that, and 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 just this concept of emotional intelligence, and then with confidence as well, and and how you view those terms from a faith perspective, and and how you you know in- incorporate that into how you encourage guys, challenge guys to to really understand how they implement that into their, their life as a leader. Well, I think it's important to make sure that you're open to coaching, right? Mm. You know, I mean, even though, you know, you might say, oh man, you know, I love this information. Like I want more information. Well, I'll ask you, how open are you to receiving coaching? Because if you're open to receiving coaching, then it's easier to pour something into you, but it's hard to pour into a cup that's, that's already full. So what I do is what I do, I do an assessment, which is a quantitative analysis of how people think. I need to know a third party intervention of how you think, because sometimes depending upon where you are emotionally, you're going to have your guard up to receive a lot of information, Bryce. Oh, yeah. And, and even though and what I tell people, just because you have great information, it doesn't mean people are ready to receive it. <laughs> That's true. So it's important for us to understand how to ask the right questions so that we can allow them to receive the right information at the right time. So, so you're, you're sharing this you know, with, with leaders and whether it's athletes or businessmen to, to understand yeah. their, their emotional intelligence. So you're coming at it from you know, your perspective, your experience. And so what are some of the things that, that they learn as they go through this process of, of, of implementing mm-hmm. uh, emotional intelligence? Okay. That's a great question because so coming, coming from the NFL and playing cornerback in the NFL, sometimes we were on the Island alone. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. So sometimes we're, we're on the field, even though 10 more guys are on the field, you are in charge of your position. And if you know that that ball is going to come to you, you cannot panic in this moment. But you have to trust in your preparation and you have to not allow anxiety and what you can't control to overwhelm you and not perform at a peak performance level. Mm. So what I do is I say this. I help them to understand that if you want to perform at a high level, what level are you willing to control? Hmm. Right. So what level are you willing to control? So when I take them through an assessment, Bryce, I help them to understand, are you in a place where you're structured? Are you in a place to where you're procrastinating? Are you in a place to where you're self driven? Or do you need someone to continually coach you? Are you in a place to where you're disregarding people? Sometimes if you take a person that is pushing for results, pushing for results, you'll find that on the back end, a lot of times they disregard people to get to those results. Ooh, man. I find if a person is insecure or if a person continues to walk in arrogance so that other people cannot speak into their lives. So it measures so many different dynamics, but it measures into two worlds, internal and external world. Mm. It's good stuff. He's Leonard Wheeler joining us here on Unpacking It. He's a former NFL safety and, and now, man, he's doing all sorts of things. He's a, a performance coach, executive advisor, uh, NFL executive director, NFL transitions coach, and he's a speaker and an author as well. And, and so great to talk with him today. And, and Leonard, we know that, that really you know, a lot of what you do and, and, and who you are, is, of course, is, is rooted in your faith. And, and so you incorporate that into you know, what you speak on and, and how you help people. And, and so that's, that's your foundation. And, and so as you, you know, share with us today, at what point in your life did, did you really make that, that decision to follow Jesus and to build your life on your faith and to pursue him? So I gave my life to the Lord in 1994. Mm. And even in giving my life to the Lord in 1994, I, I was a closet Christian. You know, I was a closet believer to where I wore two suits. I had on my my church suit, and Mm. I had on my party suit. (laughs) And depending upon who I was in front of, which that determined which suit I was going to put on. It was almost like not understanding that Clark Kent is still Superman, right? That's right. And so so when you start to realize 
that, you know what, Leonard, you cannot separate the father. Wherever you are, there he is also, mm. right? And so when I started to realize that, Bryce, it helped me to figure out what am I willing to live for and what am I willing to die for? Ooh. And, and, and it opened up my eyes, and not only did it open up my eyes, it opened up my mind to conceive and to understand that he is for me, not against me. And sometimes we think we're going to give up something, but what we're doing is that we're gaining something. We're gaining a relationship. We're gaining eternal life. Amen. And not only that, we're gaining a conscience to where the Father says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. And so what happens is when we come amongst believers, right, it, it ignites this dynamite, this TNT that changes lives, man. Mm. And and so when I go into companies, it's not about me sharing the word of God because the word of God is going to come through me. It's about me sharing my belief system and me sharing the standards in which I live by. That's right. That's right. And the, the truth comes out and, and how you bring the, the light wherever you go. And, and, and that's Jesus living in you. And so uh, so that, that's cool to hear Leonard Wheeler uh, with us on Unpacking It. And, and so... As you've grown in your faith, what are some of the, the, the key ways you've been able to do that? You, you mentioned being with other believers. What, what are some of the, just the key practical ways day-to-day that, that you're growing in your faith? You know, it's important for me. Like, every day I listen to, I listen to YouTube podcasts on pastors, on uh, motivational spiritual speakers, and I also— Make sure that I take time to pray in the morning before I get out of bed. I just say a small prayer. Father, thank you so much for waking me up this morning. Lord, I pray that you would ignite courage and inspiration in me so that I can be a blessing to other people. Mm. Now, you know, it's just as simple as picking up the Word and just reading the Word for two or three minutes, right? And what happens a lot of times is that transformation happens when you're not looking for it. Mm. You know, and, you know, the Father creates transformation when we commit ourselves to him. And it, and it, we don't have to be like the pastor next door. We can make sure that the Father wants to meet us where we are. You don't have to become someone else for him to meet you. Mm. Like he wants to meet you. All he's saying is that I knock at your door. All you have to do is open it. It's good. Good stuff. Leonard Wheeler uh, with us on Unpacking It. And, and so uh, one of the, the questions that, that you ask on, on social media is, is who's in your huddle? And, and so what, what makes a, a good huddle? What does that question mean exactly? And, and how important is, is having a huddle to the, the growth in your life spiritually and, and otherwise? You know, I think a huddle is important because so I've been playing sports since I was five years old, right? Organized sports. And I've had huddles my entire life. And what happens in the huddle is this, is that you create this sense of courage, this sense of belonging, this sense of I'm not by myself, but this sense of I want to play to win, not just for myself, but for other people. And you start to realize that, you know what, there are people in this world regardless of what's happened in my past, that I can trust. You know, there are people, regardless of what's happened in my past, that still want me to win. And, and, and I think when you start to identify that, is that it allows you not to live in so much regret and so much bitterness of your past failures, but it allows you to continue to say, you know what, huddles change as seasons change. So does huddles. Hmm. And what I have to make sure that I do is to keep my mind open and focused on the Father that he's going to bring the right people to my huddle. But guess what? He's also going to bring me to the right huddle of other people. To use you. No question about it. Former NFL yes. safety Leonard Wheeler, our guest right now on Unpacking It. He's a, a speaker, author, a coach, an advisor uh, in the NFL and, and with businesses. And you're dealing with a, a lot of leaders as you, you speak and, and as you advise key leaders in, in companies. 
And, and you mentioned earlier, there are different types of leaders, different personalities, and it's important for us to kind of mm-hmm. figure out you know, who we are and, 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 and how we operate. But, but I'm just curious, what, what are some of the key qualities that are somewhat you know, universal that can take a good leader and, and really, as he develops these qualities, can become a great leader? And when I think about that, I think about Dr. Miles Monroe. He said, he said that he would rather take a lion leading a pack of sheep than a sheep leading a pack of lions, hmm. right? Because, and one of the reasons he said that in the Bible, it talks about a lion and it talks about an eagle. And what I love about both of those animals is this. The lion is not the fastest. The lion is not the biggest. The lion is not even the smartest. Hmm. The hyena is even smarter than the lion and the <laughs> serpent. But what the lion possesses is this. He's not even the tallest the giraffe is. He's not even the biggest the elephant is. So when you think about the lion, what does he possess that the cheetah, who's the fastest, they don't possess? He possesses the mindset of leadership. See, and what he does, he cancels out all of our excuses not to be a leader. Mm. Because you don't have to have all of those attributes to lead. What you do have to have is a leadership mindset. Because you've seen all of those things, all of those people that possess all of those great attributes, but they cannot get out of their own way. (laughs) So what I talk about is understanding what your mindset is to lead. And if you can do that, we can develop the rest of that that is within you. Leonard Wheeler, our guest right now on Unpacking It. And and, and final thought, and we'll kind of wrap th- th- this up you, you wrote a book called beyond the locker room developing your game plan for life's transitions and and so earlier on we, we talked a little bit about you know just your your mission and, and wanting to help people transition well a- as we end things let, let's encourage people today that that may be facing a a tough transition right now and and they're they're looking for kind of the the, the next step they're they're looking to to just get through something B- based on your book and just your your heartbeat today what what's that final word of encouragement to that to that person man you know what my word would be my word would be to stand firm stand firm with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel and understand that this that this too shall pass and what i mean by that is i don't mean to 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 create a cliche here But what I am going to tell you is this. We have all failed and fallen short. And sometimes we can't forgive others and we can't forgive ourselves. But as we continue to walk boldly, understanding that our faith will be tested, but understanding that through that test of faith, it will create perseverance. And so what my my word of encouragement is, is to stand firm, to continue to push forward, Allow that storm that you're going through to almost act as if the eagle. The eagle runs towards the storm, and that storm elevates them over the storm. That that wind elevates them over the storm so that they can then see better and create a vision for moving forward. Amen. Well, let's leave it right there, Leonard, and and really just appreciate you being a part of the show today, and and I encourage people to check out LeonardWheeler.com, LeonardWheeler.com, and you can find out more information about him and everything that he's got going on, and and you can keep up with him on social media as well. He he gives you a lot of encouragement uh, on there also. And so, Leonard, man, great to finally have you on the show, and we'll have to do this again. Thank you so much, Bryce. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. So we appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Unpacking it, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. There's Leonard Wheeler right. joining us here on Unpacking It. For more information about the show, our events, and other resources, visit unpackingit.com. That's U-N-P-A-C-K-I-N-I-T dot com. We hope you are encouraged, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. To support our show and Unpacking It Ministries with a financial gift, visit unpackingit.com slash donate. We look forward to unpacking sports, faith, and life with you again next week.